Hey, thanks for joining us today. This is Lance with Brando Consulting, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at how to create a new part in Fishbowl. So to create a new part in Fishbowl, we go to the top left hand area under Materials and select Part. We'll go to the Part screen. The next thing we'll do is go to the top left hand corner, click New, and we've got a wizard. So I'm going to type in test part, test description, and then the next thing we need to decide to do, what type of part is it? If it's an inventory type part, that means we're going to track the location. We can track lot number, serial number, things like that if we want. It's optional. We can track the quantity, and we can track the asset value with costing layers. Fishbowl will calculate average costs, even if you're using the standard costing method because there's a variance involved. So most of your parts will be inventory, right? Service is a part that you'll use if you're outsourcing a work order, for instance, and you're purchasing service from a vendor to add or change a work order. Labor, that's obvious, that's performed internally, those who will perform the work order internally. Overhead, that may be extra electricity to roast or extra gas to extrude plastic and, and foam. Non-inventory. This is the biggest question I, I get a lot of times. Non-inventory is actually a tangible item that you can pick. Okay, It's not like the other three I just looked at. You can pick it, you can pack it, you can ship it, it has weight, it has value. But a non-inventory item means it's insignificant enough that you don't need to run a quantity report in Fishbowl. Or you don't need to track the location of it. And when you purchase it and receive it, you're just going to expense it out. Non-inventory items can go on a work order, so that's fine, that's fine. You can actually even manufacture non-inventory, that's, that's a whole other story, but... I'll skip internal use in capital equipment. No, ever, no one ever uses that. Shipping, that's freight in, freight out, packaging, things like that. It's a, it's, it's a service. It's considered a service in QuickBooks, but in Fishbowl, um, it's shipping. So I'm going to grab the most common one, inventory. And right here, uh, we need to decide whether we're going to sell it or not. If we sell it, it creates a product. If we don't, it doesn't create a product. So We'll click uh, Next and turn tracking on or off here. This is just a process of going through this, this wizard. Uh, if we know what vendor we purchased it from, go ahead and add that. Or excuse me, here if it's currently in stock, that's usually not the case. We usually buy it. Default locations, this is where your inventory is stored by default. If you decide this is the area for this item, and you have a location for it, you can fill that out. Default vendor info. Here we go. This, If you know which vendor you're going to purchase this part from, then select the vendor and the cost that you purchase this part from. Great to have. If, if a vendor is assigned, then it works uh, well with auto purchasing feature. Custom fields. You can fill out to custom fields. Default accounts. This is where we map the accounts to QuickBooks. So think about who you're going to give user rights to create a new part. Whoever has rights to creating a new part may possibly have rights to mapping that part to a specific account in QuickBooks. Then the categories in the product tree. You can categorize your parts and add them to the category here in the product tree. Product custom fields and you're done. There we go. There's creating a new part in Fishbowl. Thanks for joining us today with Brando Consulting. Thanks for watching.